A deal has reportedly been struck for about 25% of the Armenian quarter of Jerusalem's old city to be leased off for 99 years. Armenians here feel that the deal even encompasses their homes and businesses, whilst Arab voices have been decrying what they see as a handover of occupied land integral in the context of the Israel-Palestine conflict. The area is called the Cow's Garden, or Goverun Partez. A company called Zana Capital took over what is now a car park in April. The company owner, Danny Rubenstein, an Israeli-Australian businessman, has been declining to comment on the matter. He planned to build a luxury hotel. The Armenian community feels that the deal is the writing on the wall, a precursor to their presence being totally squeezed out and could spell the end of the Armenian character of Jerusalem's old city. I mean, this is seven dependents. It started with hiring a parking place. Then after two months, it was followed by saying we are doing a deal with 99 years. And now we find out that seven other pro properties have been also sold, which means five Armenian families will be homeless without their knowledge they have been sold. The most painful thing about Gobarun Bardez, which was leased without the knowledge of the community, without the knowledge of the Brotherhood, which was leased clandestinely by the Patriarch and his associate, is 700 years old. We have possessed this piece of land since 700 years, and we have bought it in 17 times, bit by bit. <laughs> Activists and residents have been protesting every Friday, sometimes even forming a human chain around the Armenian quarter. They are calling for the deal to be torn up. Now, you might have heard a lot of things, but nothing is, is accurate, nothing is 100%. Because for the past two years, we have been deceived, we have been lied to, we have been betrayed. So the deal started out as a deal with the municipality. It was a 10-year lease. And then information emerged that it was, in fact, a 99-year lease that was given to some developer or some businessman. So our goal uh, has been, will always be, for this land to stay Armenian. Our goal is for the Patriarch to withdraw his signature from this contract. Our goal is for the Patriarch to be more transparent with the community and to be held accountable. In the 1967 Six-Day War, Israel annexed East Jerusalem, which includes the Old City and the Armenian Quarter. To this day, East Jerusalem is still internationally recognized as part of Palestine. Thus, the Cow's Gardens leasing off resulted in Jordanian and Palestinian authorities freezing their recognition of the Armenian Patriarch. Residents told us that the Arab side saw this deal as a betrayal of the Palestinian cause, a handover of Palestinian land to Israeli settlers who have already taken over much of the West Bank, making the idea of an independent Palestine or a comprehensive peace more distant. In 2021, Baret Yeretsyan, the Patriarchate's real estate director, stated that part of the quarter, the Cow's Garden, was indeed to be leased off. Several Armenian priests and bishops co-signed a letter condemning the deal. They claimed that they were not properly consulted or presented with alternatives. However, two years on, it seems that the deal is going forward. This year, in response to the community's outrage and allegations that the deal also encompassed the houses of Armenian residents, the Armenian patriarch Nurhan Manugyan defrocked Yeretsyan. The patriarch claimed that Yeretsyan did not clarify the full scope of the deal. Last month, after rumors swelled that Yeretsyan was to leave the country after his defrocking, his residence was surrounded by protesters and he was led out of the old city by Israeli special forces. Now in Los Angeles, he said that he had been scapegoated and that one day the truth will come out, adding that he was punished for an act that the patriarch signed. 
Of course he was responsible. Uh, some even say he was the mastermind behind the, the whole contract. But uh, we have also to remember that the authority that is recognized as, as the owner of these lands is the Patriarchate and the Patriarch himself. Without the signature of a Patriarch, nothing can be sold. We gathered uh, in the hundreds. It was unprecedented in the history of the Armenian Quarter. I mean, as long as I can remember, at least. That day on, the protests continued on a weekly basis. So today was the third protest. This man is the sole responsible or the main responsible of this contract and these dealings. He must be held accountable. The Patriarchate must have called him, must have demanded answers, demanded papers, demanded all the, the explanations that were needed, but they did not do that. To get a two-sided full picture of this Goveri Partes or Cow's Garden issue, we have requested for a comment or interview from a representative of the Armenian Patriarchate of Jerusalem. So far, however, with little success. However, friend of Civilnet, Avedis Krikorian, who spent much time in Jerusalem growing up, did score a meeting with the Patriarch. We had a hard time to meet the Patriarch because uh, people that were surrounding him, uh, I don't want to give any names right now, but uh, they all know that they, for some weird reason, they don't want us to meet the Patriarch. He promised that very soon it will be corrected, it will be reversed. Well, the same thing he talked to uh, Aram Gatoigos in Antlias, and he told him, according to what we read in the news, the exact same words, that he's working hard on this and it will be reversed very soon. Uh, regarding other issues that I asked him about the Palestinian uh, Mr. Abbas and the Jordanian King Abdullah, they froze uh, the recognition of him and he said that will be fixed once everything is fixed. Many people do research, they say. George Hintilian is a renowned Jerusalem historian. He was so disturbed by the deal that other community members said that it was the first time they had heard him swear. I would not curse in English. Okay. In Armenian, you, you would? Yeah, oh, uh, <laughs> the Armenian uh, co uh, community in Jerusalem is the oldest living Armenian community outside Armenia. It has a continuous history of 1,600 years. And uh, we have evidence of this, uh, not only literary, but archaeological. Uh, we had uh, monks in the desert already in the 5th century. In the Crusader period, we had queens, and uh, the same uh, in the Mamluk period, we had a heavy presence, and especially in the Ottoman period. So we have uh, edicts from uh, Omar, from Saladin, from uh, Sultan uh, Suleiman, uh, and the Armenian quarter has been always in this part of the city, which is southwest. Of course, the Armenian court had developed first as a hospice for pilgrims. And pilgrims used to come uh, in big groups like caravans, 500, 600. And uh, we had to provide uh, accommodation for them. The Armenian quarter is basically one sixth of the city within the walls of Jerusalem. So the Armenian presence is out of proportion to our numbers in the world, and we have to be proud of this presence. I think the most urgent thing for the Armenian world, if they don't want to lose Jerusalem, we are living in hell, to tell you frankly. In front of our eyes, there is a corpse. Every day we see this corpse. Our quarter, part of our quarter is not ours anymore. But there is a way. If we continue to struggle and confront all the red lines have been crossed. And so our main motivation is very clear. We, we want to, to fight for this land. This land that was acquired over seven centuries, inch by inch, through the sweat and blood of our ancestors, of Armenian, I mean, Armenian benefactors, Armenian pilgrims who 
some used every cent they had to 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 help the Armenian quarter to help the Armenian patriarchy.